Are you afraid of God? No. But I'm afraid of you. After the recent terrorist attacks in Paris, religious fundamentalism and extremism are conceived as a persistent threat again. And it made me wonder, how does a narrow worldview justify itself? And furthermore, why do people join extremist groups as individuals? Bioshock Infinite is mostly discussed because of its integration of the multiverse theory and its reduction of American exceptionalism to absurdity. But what can we learn from it about fundamentalism, extremism and fascism? The post-war era made many scientists question which mechanisms made fascism and in turn the Holocaust possible in the first place. Sociologist Theodore Adorno was one among them and acted as research director for the studies pursued on the so-called authoritarian personality. In their theory, the authors tried to denominate common traits that make people more likely to respond to fascist and, in the end, extremist ideologies altogether. The traits they worked out apply pretty well to the city of Colombia. Conventionalism is the adherence to the established, which, revealingly, led to Colombia's ascension and rejection of the Union. The next trait, authoritarian submission, can be witnessed all throughout Colombia and is a necessity for the prophet's rule. Authoritarian aggression is essentially what faces Booker DeWitt after the raffle. In the case of superstition and stereotype, we find many suitable examples. Colombia is filled with stereotypes and superstition, albeit masked as religion, is common ground for its people. Colombia's people identify with the prophet, their powerful ruler, and therefore comply with the requirements of power and toughness. Furthermore, the authors consider projectivity as a common trait, the tendency to project unconscious negative emotional impulses onto something else, like Booker the Wit, aka the False Shepherd, or the Vox Populi, for example. And why, you ask, did the people of Colombia develop these traits? To put this into perspective, Bioshock Infinite takes place around 1912. It would take 11 more years until Sigmund Freud's The Ego and The It help subjectivity and the unconscious take center stage. Socialization at the time was heavy on suppression of unwanted drives and parenting valued obedience above self-development. Spike does not matter to a Liberty Scout. There's no room for preference, only duty. All those suppressed animal aggressive drives could only be released against the socially disadvantaged or minorities. Another mechanism that could be taking place here is what Freud called reaction formation, which basically means that you become extremely oppressed to an aspect of yourself that you're not willing to accept. Considering the blatant racism in Colombia, this mechanism in particular is highly interesting. In their most renowned work, Dialectic of Enlightenment, Horkheimer and Adorno, among other influential theses, try to create a philosophical prehistory of anti-Semitism. In it, they develop the thesis about the effect of the strange. According to it, humans create a common ground to interact with the world by mimicking. This primal clinging to nature is disrupted by civilization. Imagine you're living in a floating city. How could you be more detached from nature? Yet, in the prejudices and images about racial minorities, the people of Colombia recognize the isolated remains of their tabooed mimicry. And because this aspect is such a taboo in the detached world of Colombia, reaction formation makes their hate grow stronger. And there you have it. Two years and we still have stuff to talk about in this game. And I feel like I have barely grazed the topic, so if you want to see a second part, hit that like button. And while you're at it, go and check out my other stuff on my channel. And if you like it as well, then you should subscribe. And I hope to see you next time when TOG theorizes on games.